Thank you, Oliver. Hello, everyone. Very happy to see you all here. I was already worried that everyone's chasing the food downstairs. So these are two standard five kilogram garbage bags, right? How weird would it be if I would just throw these garbage bags out of my apartment onto the street like this? Are you ready? <laughs> would be quite weird, right? But actually, a couple of hundred years ago, that's what we were doing. Remember how the streets looked like? <coughs> Luckily, today we don't do that anymore. We got garbage trucks cleaning up the streets for us, right? Are we really not doing that anymore? This morning, I took the taxi from the airport, driving here, and on the drive over here, five kilogram, that's amount, about the amount of CO2 that we produced during that drive, and basically threw it out of the window onto the street. And as it wasn't so good for our streets a couple of hundred years ago, we all know that's not the best thing to do to our climate. And that's not even mentioning my flight over here from Zurich this morning. But I'm convinced that in not too far future, probably in a couple of years, for us it will be as usual and as normal as the garbage track cleaning up our street from the garbage. It will be to clean our atmosphere from our mess that we have produced, so to remove CO2 from the atmosphere again. I'm Jan, founder and director of Climeworks. Back in 2009, together with my best buddy Christoph, we founded Climeworks in Zurich, Switzerland, with the goal of developing and deploying a technology for capturing CO2 from ambient air. And that's what we are doing today. We are currently about 60 employees, and we are building CO2 capture machines that look like this. Now, why? bother at all capturing CO2 from the air or extracting CO2 from the air. You've mentioned it already. Yesterday was a very important day for climate science. The IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, released the latest report, the special report on 1.5 degree global warming. And in this report, there are two messages. The first, most of you will be familiar with, and that's not very surprising. First message is, in order to meet the challenge of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees, there is a requirement for substantial mitigation, emission reduction, phasing out of coal, and even faster introduction of renewable energies. But there was a second message, and that was not so clear before yesterday. This message was, we have already emitted so much CO2 that only reducing future emissions will not be enough, and we will need to actually reduce CO2 in the atmosphere, that means we need to capture and extract CO2 and permanently store it somewhere else. Now let's put some numbers to that. There are many different models, as you know. I took an average model, uh, climate model, saying that in order to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees, by mid of the century, we'll need to extract 8 billion tons of CO2 from the air every year. 8 billion tons, that's 8,000 times 1 million tons. Well, and these are 5 kilos. So that's quite a lot, and that's a big challenge. And in order to tackle this challenge, we will need a portfolio of solutions, and we will need different solutions, different approaches. Machines that can capture CO2 out of the air, like this one, as we are building them, and as a handful of other companies in Europe and North America are also developing them, they will play an important role in this. Now, how do they work? Let's zoom in a little bit and look at this, which is the base module of a Climax CO2 capture plant. We call this a CO2 collector, similar as a solar collector. It's basically a big box containing a filter material. And that filter material, you can imagine it as a sponge with a very high surface area. During a first step, we have a fan that is drawing air through this box and the CO2 contained in the air is bound at the surface of the filter material. At the end, CO2-free air leaves the filter. We do this until we have filled the filter with CO2, then we shut off the box, we close the lids, and we heat it basically just up to 100 degrees Celsius. And by heating it up, the CO2 is released again, and we extract 
concentrated CO2 at 99.9% .9 purity from the filter. This plant here, which I've shown a couple of times before, that is the first commercial direct air capture plant that we have commissioned last year in 2017. And it is in the vicinity of Zurich in Switzerland, extracting 900 tons of CO2 from the air, supplying it to a greenhouse. They fertilize their plants, they get more and larger and better tomatoes and cucumbers with the CO2. Other plants that we are building, they are used to create the bubble, bubbles in the water of your fizzy drinks. So CO2 from the air as a bubble maker in the water. Over the past couple of years, we have built to date 10 plants. This is where they are located. It's a map of Europe. And particularly important is this dot up here in Iceland. In October 2017, together with our local partners in Iceland, with the local utility Reykjavik Energy, we built the worldwide first negative, a carbon negative power plant. And that is powered by geothermal energy. So you see a picture here? Maybe, yes. That is the Hellish Heidi geothermal power plant in the vicinity of Reykjavik. And in order to create a carbon negative power plant, we needed to combine two things. On the one hand, we took a Climrock CO2 capture plant. That's what you see there in the red circle. And on the other hand, we needed a safe and permanent storage solution. And for the purpose of storage, over the past 10 years, in Iceland, they developed a process that is called Carbfix process. What is done in this Carbfix process? You take the CO2 that is now captured from the air by a Climrox plant, you mix it with water, and you inject it about a kilometer deep underground. Down there, there are so-called basaltic rock formations. They react with the CO2, and within as little time as two years, the CO2 becomes solid carbonates. So basically what we're doing there, we take CO2 out of the air, inject it on the ground, and turn it into stone. So together with our partners, Reykjavik Energy, we are very happy to announce that we are now planning a scale-up phase. We have operated our pilot plant for one year in harsh Icelandic weather conditions. And it was very successful. So we could operate it over several months. And now, as it was a very important day for climate yesterday, for us it is also very important that we can announce that we will scale up what we have done here by a factor of 40. So we've done a first important step, but there is still a lot of scale up to be done in front of us. So one important factor, that is cost. So there is a long way to 8 billion tons. We have built the first commercial plant so far. Now, on the way to 8, billion ton, uh, to 8 billion tons, we need to get to the limit of our technology, which is, which is designed to extract CO2 at about $100 per ton from the atmosphere. Today, we are at about $600, and we need another four years to go down there. In the meantime, we need several niche applications. We can supply CO2 to beverage manufacturers, to greenhouses, and we need, in particular, large corporations who are willing to go a first step to be pioneers and not buy necessarily the cheapest product, but maybe the most sustainable product. And for this, we also need you in order to ask these corporations to do so. And this brings me to my last point. With the scale up planned, we are very proud to offer one more thing. Over the past couple of years, many people have approached us and asked us, how can we contribute? Can you, as Climeworks, remove my personal emissions? And that is great, because for 8 billion tons, you need the politics. You need global mechanisms. But to start with, we need pioneers. And therefore, as of today, we offer to you and to everyone worldwide to extract their personal CO2 emissions with our next plant to be deployed in Iceland, which is going to be built in 2019. If you like that, you can go to Facebook or our website. You can follow us, and you become a pioneer in carbon removal. Thank you very much.